Although it may be hard to believe, before Pixar's Cars was a toy line, Cars was actually a movie that was in general positively received, albeit much less so than the rest of Pixar's movies up to that point. I have to say I was kind of a fan, being young enough around the time it came out and it was full of bright colors, fast action sequences, and likeable characters. And the very same could be said for the game that came out of it. If you think you know what a game about the movie Cars would be like, then you're absolutely right. You drive cars. That part would be hard to screw up. You play as Lightning McQueen in a story mode that takes place after the movie, in and around Radiator Springs. After bowing out and taking third place in the film, you're trying to get back into the Piston Cup and beat Chick Hicks by training in the open world of Radiator Springs. You have a total of 250 points spread out across five chapters, each separated by a 12 lap Piston Cup in a big stadium. You need to collect a certain number of points and complete specific story missions to move on, but just beating the story still leaves about half the game's content. This is a surprisingly big game, and if you're a fan of the mechanics, you're unlikely to feel like you wasted your money. The game controls fairly well, and since this is a racing game, you're almost always going to be holding down the accelerate button. You have the standard brake and reverse button, but I'm much more fond of the emergency brake, which allows you to make sharp turns near cliffs and stop yourself from a bad drift. Meanwhile, you have the tilt mechanic, which causes this marvelous sight to happen, reducing your speed a fair bit, but allowing you to make some seriously sharp turns. Power sliding is the standard drift mechanic, and allows you to slide in and out of turns smoothly. You gradually unlock another mechanic, the boosts. Boost. Boosts. Boost. Boost. You gradually unlock nitrous tanks, which allow you to get bigger air off jumps. You also have the ability to perform a little hop while tapping the control stick up, which you can use to get bigger air off jumps or enter shortcuts that require leaping over a small ledge. The game also includes the racing equivalent of teabagging, allowing you to flip into reverse at any time while still going forward, simply mirroring the steering controls. It is the douchiest possible thing you could do in that situation, and I love it for that very reason. These controls apply to almost every standard mode in the game, where you play as either Lightning and a few other characters. You can play as all your favorites, like Doc, Sally, Mater, and... Count, Count, Count Spatula, you know, from the movie, and also my nightmare. The story missions include exploring the hub world, obstacle courses, and regular races, piston cup races, and a few other types. Other characters have their own unique play styles, such as Luigi, who has to collect a certain number of tires hidden around town under a time limit. One of the more unique modes is tractor tipping, a stealth and time-based game where you have to avoid searchlights and Frank, while making your way all around the tractors in the given area. This is a legitimately tense mode with tight passages, interesting layouts, and it requires a bit of forethought and observation to clear properly. My favorite minigame is probably the one where you have to chase after speeders and pull them over as a cop. You even have some demolition derbies that are complete chaos, and well, this. This game certainly has no shortage of original ideas. Completing challenges and ranking well in races nets you more piston cup points and bonus currency, allowing you to unlock more events, characters, and concept art. Standard races involve five or so cars racing along a closed path that can otherwise be driven in the hub world. Three laps is standard, and they're just pleasant drives around some satisfying courses. They have branching paths and even little shortcuts you can take if you feel like showing off. Piston Cup races are built up to be a big deal, but they don't actually feel that way until the later ones. These races are just simple loops with 20 different cars on the track at once, and for 12 laps. The later ones increase the speed you can go at, so it becomes this game of trying to weave your way through a crowd of cars while trying not to slow yourself down too much. You usually have a pit stop minigame that you need to do as quickly as possible, but I don't really know what effect it has on my time, I never really figured that out. The fact that the Piston Cup races are so infrequent actually supports the movie's message that driving isn't just about going fast and turning left. The majority of the game is actually spent doing a lot of the things I listed earlier. And speaking of which, this game has a surprisingly good sense of progression. It begins with a few events in a fairly big initial hub area, with some basic mechanics. Beating the chapter slowly introduces more mechanics that aren't game changers, but noticeable in their effect. As you progress through the game, the various types of events increase, contrasting the pedal to the metal races with scavenger hunts. And of course, the open world eventually becomes three big sections. The open world is actually really well thought out, and I'm a big fan of sandbox games. The Radiator Springs area is full of big open spaces with recognizable buildings and landmarks, mazes of rock formations, trees, small jumps, and scenic views. Ornament Valley is the biggest and most wide open area, with fewer landmarks, but lots of space to drive around in, and perfect for going fast. And finally, you have Tailfin Heights, a more forested area with waterfalls, more narrow roads, mine shafts, all leading up to the peak of a mountain. Actually, this kind of reminds me of Red Dead Redemption's three areas. Like, a lot. In all honesty, though, it's a testament to just how well an open world is designed in a game that I can fool around for an hour without doing any story missions and not get bored. Both those games excel in this regard. For example, there were some cool rock formations that you can boost yourself onto if you aim yourself correctly, so even in a game based around driving, the open world lends itself to platforming of all things. The game has some issues that are not game-breaking, but they certainly won't leave you amused. The game's hit detection is kind of weird sometimes, and collisions with other cars, especially in the races with lots of other cars, are just downright chaotic. Like here, for example. And I ran into my fair share of getting bounced around by scenery and just getting stuck on poles. One really, really weird issue is due to going off track in races. You're given an arrow telling you where the road is in a 3 second timer to get yourself back onto the road before it resets you. Which feels kind of patronizing, considering I've had the screen fade to black when the counter was still at 2. I could be having a nice comfortable drive, but then suddenly the game's like, GET BACK ON THE ROAD, YOU PIECE OF SHIT! 
Even weirder, the game actually spawns me ahead of where I just was, and quite often I'd find myself appearing in front of other racers when I was just in last place. It actually became advantageous to fall off the course on purpose if I made a dumb mistake, just so I could stay with the pack. Like I said, this isn't game breaking, but really, really weird. The game is fairly easy in general, so I never really got upset when stuff like that happened, and much of my experience with the game was just for fun. The game also has a versus mode, and as you can see, I just got so good at the game that anyone who plays against me it looks like they're not even moving at all. Get to my level. The game's final chapter closes with Chick Hicks calling you out on being just too damn fine, and says your win was based on pure luck. You know, even though we came in 5th place, yeah just forget about that, it doesn't matter. Yes, the ending is ridiculous, but overall the story is rather simple and nice, and it's a kids game, so it's perfectly fine like that. But anyway, let's forget about that, you know what's super cool? The game's soundtrack. It may just be because I listened to the movie soundtrack a lot as a kid, but Cars has a really good selection of songs for getting you pumped up and ready to drive really, really fast. The music in the game is actually really great. It's comprised of happy guitar tunes written exclusively for the game, but also some licensed songs as well. Quite honestly, I think this is one of the most appropriate and enjoyable uses of licensed music I've heard in a game ever. I'd also like to point out that basically every big star from the movie, which, by the way, had a lot of famous people in it, also voiced for this game, which is a completely original script. That is insane. The graphics look pretty nice as well, with a nice variety of colors for the characters and environments. The character models don't have that standard janky look that most licensed games have, they actually look like less detailed versions of the Pixar models. The environments are no slouch either, driving through Tailfin Pass, seeing that waterfall for the first time with the sun sparkling on it, it's actually a really cool sight for a game of this scope. Radiator Springs is actually a really interesting and scenic place, and it has that Pixar quality design to it that is uniquely them. And while we're on the subject, let's talk Pixar for a moment. What would you say that most of Pixar's movies have in common? Well, they're never usually based around a typical human culture, and even then the exceptions have either fantasy or sci-fi elements to them. Pixar films try to distance themselves from normal human society by trying to imagine what a society of robots, monsters, or even toys would look like. They take either simple or innocuous concepts and they make them relatable, they make them funny, and they make them interesting. That is what Pixar excels at, and Cars is probably their most shallow example of this. While animals and robots are living things they can think for themselves and have their own relationships, a car is not a complex organism. It's just a form of transportation. It's a tool. And cars don't fill the same role that toys do in Toy Story. Their world has no humans. They take the place of the humans. It's kind of weird when you think about it. That's why a lot of Cars jokes revolve around making really silly puns and connections to stuff only humans would relate to. You know, like how this is totally a scene of lightning getting flashed by two groupies. That joke, although not exactly the epitome of sophistication in the first place, would be downright immature in Toy Story. The story of Cars is one that basically everybody already knows or has even experienced. The story of a hotshot who has no appreciation for the simple things in life, and in order to achieve what he most desires, he needs to accept help from those he considers to be below him. And that having friends is all that matters and blah 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 at the end, it's not very complex and nor is it as compelling as going on an adventure that you've waited your whole life for, or finding out that you aren't alone in the universe. And still, I really like this movie. It's fun, but most Pixar movies are more than just fun. I don't really think of it in the same league as the other Pixar movies for me. It's just... it's just different. Maybe the problem is that Cars was never really meant to be a movie. Maybe it was unwittingly meant to be a game the whole time. I've talked in depth before about how the best licensed games are the ones that fit the game to the license as opposed to vice versa. I do really believe that, and Cars is one of, if not the best example I've ever seen of this. Cars the video game is so perfect for what its source material is that I think it's better. The Cars property works better as a game than a movie. The plot can be simple because the player is along for the ride with lightning. A movie can't just be full of racing because that would be boring, but a game about racing can be extremely fulfilling as you work your way from the bottom of the ranks back up to the top. You don't just watch the struggle, you experience the struggle. And Radiator Springs is a welcoming and enjoyable hub area around which you can play games, explore, and practice your skills. The game's world is large and designed around driving, where going fast is encouraged and where crashing into things isn't a mistake, it's hilarious. Cars is a game about practice, progression, and just having fun. And sometimes that's all a game needs to be. Hey you! Yeah, you! Thanks for watching this video! If you liked it, then you will no doubt really really like my next big project, so stay tuned for that, I'm really excited for that. If you're new here, why not check out my Tarzan review? I talked about a lot of similar themes in that one. Or why not catch up on my Spongebob playthrough, which I will be resuming soon. I'm sorry, don't kill me, please. And if you really want to see more of me, why not check out the new episodes on my group Let's Play channel, which has three videos every week, by the way. Wow, that's cool, good, that's a good deal, yay. Um, anyway, so yeah, please go away. This video takes a long time to render, so you're just making me wait more, please. I love you, but please go away. Please. Okay, bye.